Your UVP or USP, if you prefer, won't appeal to everybody, but that doesn't matter. You just need to find enough people to appeal to, and you will eventually find that tribe. You will find the group of people where your message resonates, and that is where your niche will be. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Parentpreneur Show with me, your host, Michael J. Christian. This is another in between episode, in between all our great guests. Please listen to the other shows, subscribe, like, share, all of the usual stuff. Thank you very much. So, today I wanted to tell you something, and that's to get off your backside because you are sitting on knowledge and wealth. So as business owners and entrepreneurs, we all have our own mountains of knowledge that we're sitting upon, and it's really hard to spot it because it's right underneath your arse. But over the years, we have acquired skills and experience that can be monetized and used to grow our businesses. However, not all of us take advantage of this knowledge. Capitalizing on it is not a high enough priority, or perhaps we suffer from imposter syndrome, but it should be in our top five, if not top three priorities when running a business if we really truly want to succeed and make money. Making money and growing our businesses cannot be an afterthought or a side project. We need to make it front and center as parentpreneurs, but there has to be a strong and an emotional driver to make this a priority. When you have a strong enough why, the hows will take care of themselves. It's not enough to simply want to make money, We need to have a meaningful reason why we want to succeed in our business. Take this podcast, for instance. I have prevaricated, procrastinated, and deferred getting it started for as long as I can remember because I was worried about what they would think. But guess what? If people are thinking about me, who cares? The chances are they're not even thinking about me at all. The very fact that you are listening, yeah, you, you, I'm looking at you. Thank you. That's enough for me to put this episode out there. My why is quite simple. My why is to create a legacy that's an actual lump sum of money for my family, for me, for my children's children, and also to create a business ecosystem in which that money, that wealth is regenerated and grows over time. I have a very specific figure set on both the legacy pot and also on the monthly revenues, the net monthly revenues that I want to take from my multiple streams of business. Now, perhaps yours is the same, to leave a legacy for future generations. Perhaps it's something completely different, but whatever your reason is, it must be big enough to drive you forward and motivate you to success. So here are seven tips to help you start to monetize your knowledge, get off your mountain of wealth and start putting it to good use. Point one, be clear on your niche. What can you wax lyrical about? What do your friends or family always come to you for advice on? Or what three areas are you good at? It don't have to be great, just good. What three areas are you good at? Because where they intersect cast your mind back to junior school maths, those little circles overlapping, and where they intersect in the middle, that is your gem. That is your individual, unique niche. For me, it is being a serial entrepreneur. It is also in more recent years, over the last 10 years, having two kids, both of them with neurodiversity, and it is learning to meld my world together into the most perfect possible world that I can for my family and I. Point two, develop a unique value proposition to set you apart. Your UVP or USP, if you prefer, won't appeal to everybody, but that doesn't matter. You just need to find enough people to appeal to, and you will eventually find that tribe. You will find the group of people where your message resonates, and that is where your niche will be. Point three, be digitally present to showcase your expertise. Now, I'm a card-carrying introvert. Even talking to myself on camera, on mic, 
I find a little bit socially awkward. But there is no way that I can carry my message, my information out to the world without putting myself out there. Do it. It's not that bad. You know, you are not going to be able to go through life without drawing criticism, without falling out with people, without disliking people or having them dislike you. I say to my kid, if you're in a room of 10 or more people, there is a chance that there will be one person there that you do not like or who does not like you. Deal with it. That's life. Don't let the minority spoil your party. Okay? That's really simple. Tip four, offer free resources. This will build up trust in you as a person. So free resources like blogs, posts on LinkedIn, Facebook, etc., videos, eBooks, anything that can attract and appeal to your potential tribe, get it out there and start to build trust. There is a rule called the 4711 rule. So the 4711 rule is basically that the four is that people need to have met with you, encountered you on at least four occasions. That could be in person, that could be online, uh, that could be in a group setting, it could be in a one-to-one -one setting. The seven is content. Have at least seven hours of content out there, be that blog posts, be that videos, be that podcasts. Make sure there's a good back catalogue out there of your information, of your mountain of wealth. And the 11 is 11 touch points. Make sure that people have encountered you at least 11 times on different channels and platforms or in person. So that might be on LinkedIn. It might be via your podcast. It might be uh, at networking events, etc. cetera. These, these four, three touch points, four, seven, 11, they are building up trust and validation in you as an expert in your field. Point five, deliver paid products or services that provide value and solve your client's pain points and do this through online coursing, courses or one-to-one -one coaching. This is a tricky one and one that I struggled with, with for a while. Most people don't know where to start, but a good starting point is start by asking your audience, what are the problems that they face? What are the challenges that they are encountering in their day-to-day -day business? And I can assure you, if you do this over a short period of time, you'll start to see patterns. You'll start to see a consensus. You can then take those patterns, those common pain points, those frequently experienced uh, screw-ups, and you can then flip that into a course. You can create material which can help address those pain points. The chances are you've experienced those pain points too, because, you know, like everybody else, you are unique. Um, and deliver them at low cost or no cost through a variety of digital platforms. Again, comment, DM, make a note in the comments below, and I can tell you the platforms that I use for my work. Point six, collaboration is the new black. Collaborate with people in your industry and expand your reach and credibility Competition, frankly, went out with Gordon Gecko and Lunches for Wimps. Working together with people, leveraging your knowledge, their knowledge, their base of customers, your base of customers, that is the way forward. Collaboration is far healthier. It is far more successful. And frankly, you will help more people more quickly. And that is the point of this, I'm sure. You want to reach as many people as possible with your solution and make their lives better. Point seven, continuously learn to stay relevant. I was told never question spending on books or your health. And I extend that to continual education on a one four, 12 model. I have one biggie that I'll spend on a year. I will have four quarterly mid-sized expenditures and I will have 12 small or or free expenditures on expanding my knowledge. So that might be one big sort of three day event that might sort of cost a few thousand pounds. Uh, the quarterly ones could be uh, one day events, they could be uh, workshops or courses that I can digest online in my own time. And then the 12 
that could be anything that could be a regular networking event that you go to that could be making the point of going to the same place each month and letting people know that you're there and then getting together with them and sharing knowledge sharing your experience and learning from them i'm going to wrap up now but one thing that does bug me is i often see parentpreneurs who are merely playing at being business owners they have some knowledge they have some skills but they lack a motivation and drive to succeed they just do it because it's cool to be you know in business for themselves you know or the pandemic caught made me do it but as a business owner you need to be motivated you really need to get knuckled down and know why you're doing it otherwise it just becomes a bit of a sideshow in fact it becomes not a sideshow not even a side hustle it just becomes a distraction be in business be completely in it remember the reasons why you're doing it and get the hell on with it if we don't take care of our businesses now we may find ourselves in a difficult position in the future we're living in very uncertain times in, in fact we're always in uncertain times you know i'm a very big believer in uh, not worrying about the economy just worrying about my economy take control of what you can don't worry about the rest you don't want to be in a situation in the future where you are reliant upon the support of your children and loved ones as you grow older you can't rely on state pensions. You can't rely on the banking system as it stands. Take control, take ownership, go out there, do something with your mountain of knowledge. Okay. The system is stacked against SME owners, the tax system, the legislation, all of these things. And frankly, the system is creaking under its own weight. So don't worry about it. Take charge, create your own system by taking advantage of your knowledge and skills now you can ensure yourself a successful business that will provide for you for many, many years to come. So just as a quick sort of summary before I check out, as a business owner, you have knowledge and skills that can be monetized to grow. Capitalizing on that knowledge has to be a high priority if you want to succeed as a parentpreneur. Having a strong why behind making money and growing your business is essential for motivation. It will keep you going when days seem shitty and gray. You need to be motivated and driven when it comes to business. And you need to learn to monetize your knowledge now to ensure a successful business that will provide for you in the future. Don't expect instant gratification. Okay, if you do, you'll get bored, you'll move on. Do not expect instant gratification. But if you are consistent and disciplined, it will pay off. Get ready to turn your knowledge into a profit. Let me know what ideas you have in the notes below or contact me directly. That's me checking out from another episode of The Parentpreneur Show. This is Michael J. Christian. Speak to you soon.